Jew is a very precious commodity indeed in the eyes of God. Rabbeinu felt that he was, in fact, an ordinary Jew. He did not have any gaiva, any haughtiness to assume that he is anything more than a simple human being. But as he said, we, that we, you should go and feel in any way that we are superior to you. We're not. Give me the same. He wouldn't believe on that level. Oh, oh. And a more generalization of my service. Up to now. All the possible arguments. And God not he, he justified the law. This is in relation to God. But that's also in relation to God. Wait, wait, read to God, you're going to die. It doesn't mean that's another area. There are different ways to go. Like the court jester that had served his king for many years and, uh, the, and it was faithfully. And finally he incurred the wrath of the king and the king said, you must die now because unfortunately you have committed a crime that in my eyes you must die. But in view of your faithful service for many years, I will permit you to select the method in which you should be, <laughs> your life should end. He says, your majesty, I choose to die of old age. So Moshe was decision was made by God that he had to die, but it didn't say specifically exactly method. I mean, of course, God had intimated to him before that he was going to die for his brother Aaron. But at any rate, no, he wasn't going to settle for any kind of a death than the very best. You can't have a good life, you can have a good death. If he can't be a good living Jew, he's going to be the very best Jew to die. Too good, he's going to be excellent in anything that he does. Of course, he writes the name of God, and he's keeping on writing secret Torah. He was writing, he was engaged in learning Torah and writing Torah all the, every time. And of course, the mouth of Allah can't touch him. Amazing, that's fine. But now, what is the mouth of Allah? It's all very fine to say that you can't. Uh, Excuse me, I'm at the same point. Yes, you are. But I don't know if shortly you come on Yoshua, that he goes to Yoshua's tent. Because that must be a combination of seven Majors. Yes, no. It leads me to. No. But I know. Well, so, the supper I share, I dine more than gold. And he, he, he talked, he related the the, 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 the story he was writing and didn't finish to uh, whether or not whether or not, in fact, he finished it. Then, uh, I think Rabbi Meir said he did finish it with tears in his eyes. All right. So also sure at that moment, Omar of course spoke with Gabriel. So God said to Gabriel, you know, Gabriel was one of the archangels, one of the good guys, one of the archangels that was always sent to go and cure people. So Moshe, go and take the soul of Moshe. Now you see, the first one that God selected was not the Malachim, that the ordinary person would die by. He was selecting Gabriel, the one that cures, it was to teach us how wonderful we'd be able to handle the situation. So first he sends a friendly angel. So the uh, Gabriel says to God, also a person that's equal in merit to 600,000, how can I see his death? The defender of the whole nation of the nation. Yes. So therefore, so how can Gabriel get off the and he says, Omer to Michoel, he says to Michoel, Lovash Taz, he dressed himself in anger, <laughs> all like, to meet Moshe. He, of course, writing the name of God, and the, and the shine of his of his face, of his, of his figure was, he was like an angel of the host of the Lord. Tama was frightened. Usually he frightens everybody else, you understand? Yeah. All of a sudden he's frightened of Moshe. He said, certainly no angel can take Moshe's life. He realized, he realized that, that, that this is, he's got his problem. Samuel even showed himself before to Moshe. Moshe knew already Moshe knew already. You will not take my soul. You will not take my soul. Everybody that's created in the world, their soul is handed over into my hands. He was pleading with him. I mean, this is what I'm doing. I'm doing my job. I'm not doing special, extraordinary here. Moshe says to the Malach of others, I got strength more than all the creations of the world, than anybody else in the world. I am the son of Amram. Amram was a man that never sinned in his entire life. 
went out from the womb of my mother, I was already circumcised. Yeah. Three days old. He walked Wait, with confidence. And I didn't need, I didn't have to, uh, I didn't have to have any milk in the day I was born. <laughs> and on the day I was born, I was already able to throg me and I walked on my feet. Yeah. Oh, me and I would talk to my father and mother. Uh, Nakti, I didn't drink any milk yet. I was already walking. My mother was also a seventh month. And when I was three months old, Vossi, I already prophesied. Now, Marty shows the age that in the future I would receive the Torah from, from the, uh, when I finally walked outside, Nasty the Paul III Shemelech, I walked into the palace of the king. Wait, he doesn't know about Moshe taking the crown off. So the king had dreamed that somebody was going to re- take over his dethroned. So he suspected, or uh, I don't know, the advisor said, let's test this child, which was like six months old. No. So then, no, so then they put down in front of the child hot burning coals and the crown with all the diamonds and jewels in it. So they were sparkling and hot coals also sparkled. So they wanted to see what would Moshe reach for. So naturally he was going to reach for the crown. But an angel came along and pushed his hand not to touch the crown, because if he would have taken the crown, he would have been, they, he would have been killed by the king. Because it meant his premonition was right. So he took the coal, a hot coal, and put it to his mouth. Children take everything always to put to their mouth and anything they like. So that caused his to be like burnt, that, that created the cleft in his lip or so. That's why he couldn't, he was a stutter. And then, uh, listen very carefully. Well, if he already knew the wood that he was going to get the Torah from God, why did he refuse to give God such a hard time? With, if uh, he already knew when he was uh, 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 that God was going to give him the Torah, why did he refuse for a whole week, uh, a week to go to yeah, yeah. teach people out and uh, eventually get the Torah on Mount Sinai? Hey, what is your observation? knowing that this is what's going to happen and also knowing that Moses seeing himself there's no conflict what will be it's what he he was talking about his own nothing would go wrong when he would serve God so he took a week of 